These are some of the major wars or conflict operations conducted by the Indian Navy. A multidimensional force that safeguards India's maritime territorial integrity and other maritime interests. As of 2020, the Indian Navy has more than 67,000 active and 75,000 reserve personnel in service. And has a fleet of 150 ships and submarines. It also has 300 naval aircraft, which is part of the Indian Navy Air Arm. In addition to these, currently more than 50 ships and submarines are under construction. Every year on the 4th of December, India celebrates Navy Day. The same day also marks the end of Navy Week, which too is celebrated annually. Do you know why this particular date was chosen? 50 years ago, during the Indo-Pakistan War of 1971, the Indian Navy played a significant role in creating Bangladesh. On the 4th of December 1971, the Indian Navy destroyed K-3 vessels near the Pakistani port city of Karachi. The attack sank a minesweeper, a destroyer and an ammunition supply ship, killing hundreds of Pakistani Navy personnel. This was a part of Operation Trident. The attacks by the Indian Navy changed the course of the war. The 1971 war ended on the 16th of December with India sealing its victory. The success of the attack by the Indian Navy is celebrated as Navy Day every year. Interestingly, before India's independence, Navy Day in the country used to coincide with the Royal Navy's Trafalgar Day. Trafalgar Day celebrates the victory of Britain's Royal Navy over Spain and France at the Battle of Trafalgar over 200 years ago in 1805. The Royal Indian Navy celebrated Navy Day for the first time on the 21st of October 1944. The prefix Royal was dropped from the Indian Navy on the 26th of January 1950 when India became a republic. In the years since, it has emerged as a formidable naval force. Twenty twenty one is a very special year for the Indian Navy. The year saw the naval branch of the Indian Armed Forces make great strides to realize its ambition of becoming Hatmanirbar or self reliant. This is India's first indigenous aircraft carrier, INS Vikrant, named after the country's first aircraft carrier, Vikrant. Vikrant was commissioned as the first aircraft carrier of the Indian Navy and played a key role in enforcing the naval blockade of East Pakistan during the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971. On the 24th of October, Vikrant set sail for its second sea trial. It will be inducted into the Indian Navy by August 2022. India has operated aircraft carriers for over five decades, but they were all foreign purchases. The majestic Vikrant ends the long wait for a made in India warship. The biggest ship made in India carries a price tag of over $3.3 billion. It features up to 76% indigenous parts and components. 
we all got an opportunity to board the aircraft carrier while it was under trial off the coast of Kochi, one of the important seaports of India. The 40,000 ton vessel is 262 meters long, 62 meter at its widest part and has a height of 59 meters. It has 14 decks. The ship has about 2,000 kilometers of cabling, 120 kilometers of piping and 2,300 compartments. The ship is capable of cruising at 18 knots speed with an endurance of about 7,500 nautical miles. We are inside the engine control room of the IAC or indigenous aircraft carrier. This is that particular part of the ship that controls the temperature and pressure of the engine and the entire propulsion of the ship is controlled from here and also the power generation. We are told that the ship generates enough power, the generator has enough power to power half of the city of Kochi where the ship is originally built. A robust airborne early warning and control system, the aircraft carrier can carry a total of 30 aircraft. It will host two squadrons of Russian origin MiG-29K fighters and Kmauv Ka-31 helicopters on the flight deck. The entire air traffic and ops of aircraft, be it the uh, fighter aircraft or be it the helicopters, all of them are handled from this room which is called the Flyco or Fly Control. So from here, the operations of aircraft, their landings, their takeoff, the frequency of doing so, and all of them, not just for the uh, IAC Vikrant, but also for its carrier battle group, will be done from this particular room. In fact, once fully operational, this room will also have a miniature model that will depict all of the data of the aircraft here so that they can control it visually and they can have an idea of how the aircraft, the multiple aircraft, at least about 30 of them on this vessel are controlled during takeoff, landing, arming, dearming and so on and so forth. This very area will be seeing the landing of MiG-29K fighter aircraft and besides several variants of choppers that the Navy uses and there will also be restraining blocks and several other arrestor wires that will be placed on board the ship to enable simultaneous takeoff and landing of aircraft from that very ski jump you see over there. INS Vikrant is said to have a strike range of 1500 kilometers and is also equipped with 64 Indo-Israeli surface-to-air missiles. Barak 8 along with four OTO Melara 76mm naval guns and four AK-630 point defense system guns. The first sea trial for Vikrant was commenced in August 2021. It is expected to be handed over to the Indian Navy by April 2022. The Navy will then conduct its own trials before commissioning it into service by August 2022. The 40,000 ton vessel has undergone tests for endurance, sea keeping and hull trials during the second phase. Electrical and electronic system tests along with propulsion systems, emergency equipment and other factors are also being conducted. Currently the, there are about four ships that are accompanying the IAC and the sea sortie is going on. This is one of the longest sea sorties because the last one was just a handful of days but this time it's uh, supposedly longer than a week and the Vikrant is testing its crucial systems and subsystems for their operational efficiency. The Indian Navy is ready to come into its own. On the 21st of November, its capability to undertake a broad spectrum of maritime missions went up several notches. INS Visakhapatnam was commissioned at the naval dockyard in Mumbai. The P-15B stealth guided missile destroyer has been named after the port city of Andhra Pradesh on the east coast. It is regarded as one of the most potent warships to have been constructed in India. 
The massive vessel measures 163 meters in length, 17 meters in breadth, with a displacement of 7,400 tons. The Made in India ship is equipped to fight under nuclear, biological and chemical warfare conditions. Congratulating the country, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi tweeted and said, Today is a proud day for India's quest to become Atmanirbar in the defense sector. INS Visakhapatnam is commissioned into Indian Navy. It is indigenously developed and will strengthen our security apparatus. Our efforts towards defense modernization continues with full vigor. INS Visakhapatnam is equipped with an array of weapons and sensors. These include supersonic surface-to-surface -surface and surface-to-air missiles, medium and short-range guns, anti-submarine rockets and advanced electronic warfare and communication suits. The ship has the capability of embarking two integrated helicopters and boasts of a very high level of automation with sophisticated digital network. With INS Visakhapatnam's induction, the Indian Navy is sailing closer to its target of becoming a 170-ship force by 2027. Admiral R. Hari Kumar, who recently took over as the new Chief of Navy, says the entire focus of the Indian Navy will be on strengthening its position in the Indo-Pacific region. The focus our national maritime interests and maritime security challenges for hai aur iske liye hum apna pura taakat lagayenge mere predecessors missionary leadership ke sath nausena ko guide kiya hai aur main bhi chahta hu ki isi disha mein nausena ko nausena ko aage le jaun और उन्होंने जितना अचीवमेंट्स और एक्सप्लेशमेंट्स हासिल किया है उसके ऊपर बिल करके समीक्षता यानी जॉइनर्स की तरफ कदम बढ़ाएं। A few days after commissioning INS Visakhapatnam, India achieved another milestone. On the 25th of November, INS Vela, the fourth submarine of Project 75, was commissioned. The submarine is the fourth of six underwater warships being built in India, with French collaboration. It is a Scorpion-class submarine, a class of diesel-electric attack vessels. This means it is specialized in its role as a hunter-killer designed and armed to effectively target and take out surface ships and other submarines. Vela has a length of 67.5 meters and a height of 12.3 meters. The beam measures 6.2 meters. It can reach a top speed of 20 knots when submerged and a surface top speed of 11 knots. And here is a fun fact. Vela is the name of an Indian fish from the stingray species known for its aggression and the ability to camouflage itself. The submarine's crest depicts the stingray swimming across the blue sea. The latest addition to the fleet further strengthens the Indian Navy's combat capability. The Indian Navy's ecosystem is all set for a transformation. The government has also considered a proposal to launch three indigenously built nuclear attack submarines. These waterborne vessels will be built by the Defense Research and Development Organization, or DRDO, in Visakhapatnam, Andhra Pradesh. India has plans to build 24 submarines, including six with nuclear attack capabilities. These will operate in the Indian Ocean region and will help India keep its adversaries in check at long distances. In August, the Indian Navy sealed a contract with Bharat Electronics Limited. The Defense Public Sector Unit will supply the first indigenously developed naval anti-drone system developed by the Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO. 
Naval anti-drone system will be capable of instantly detecting micro-drones. The DRDO claims that it will use a laser-based kill mechanism to terminate the target. In the next few years, the Indian Navy plans to acquire a sizable number of unmanned aerial and underwater platforms. Though the Navy is banking on drone technologies that can be made available within the country, it will also look at the best available drones already present in the global market. Like this one, a Predator drone. India is set to finalize a long-conceived proposal to procure 30 multi-mission armed Predator drones from the US for the three services at an estimated cost of over $3 billion. Last year, the Indian Navy received two Predator drones on lease from the US, primarily for surveillance over the Indian Ocean. It is already operating these drones for maritime domain awareness beyond the Straits of Malacca to Gulf of Aden. In the backdrop of China's growing aggression in the Indo-Pacific region, the Indian Navy needs to ramp up its capabilities in the areas of long-range anti-submarine warfare, surveillance and reconnaissance. Worldwide, maritime forces are involved in irregular security missions, like migration control and anti-trafficking operations. For the Indian Navy, the scope of unconventional security tasks has expanded significantly. Be it providing humanitarian relief in times of natural disasters or evacuation procedures due to any kind of ecological disaster. The Indian Navy has always been called upon for rescue and relief missions. In the aftermath of the 2014 Indian Ocean earthquake and tsunami, the Indian Navy launched massive disaster relief operations to help affected Indian states, as well as Maldives, Sri Lanka and Indonesia. Over 27 ships, dozens of helicopters, at least six fixed-wing aircraft and over 5,000 personnel of the Navy were deployed in relief operations. Experts believe that with this gesture, India found new allies in the world. When the tsunami took place in 2004, the realization that the Indian Navy was a great uh, power which could actually do good through humanitarian assistance and disaster relief in the region came upon them. So then this idea of confluence of the oceans and free and open Indo-Pacific were being talked about by various countries, but now the ambit included India. So I think the significance of Quad 1.0 is the inclusion of India in essentially a Japan-US uh, outlook towards the Indo-Pacific. 17 years later, today, India enjoys several maritime tie-ups with different countries. Be it a bilateral or a trilateral naval exercise, these military drills have become a common sight in the Indo-Pacific region. Recently, navies of the four member nations of the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, or the Quad, India, the United States, Japan and Australia, participated in the 25th edition of the Malabar Exercise, which began in the Bay of Bengal. The first phase of the exercise took place off the coast of Guam in the Pacific Ocean. During the second phase, the Indian Navy deployed its frontline warships, INS Ranvijay and INS Satpura, as well as a submarine and a fleet of P-81 long-range maritime patrol aircraft. We on got an opportunity to witness this action-packed drill. The second phase of the 25th Malabar exercise underway, the Bay of Bengal witnessing high voltage military maneuvers. We are right now on board the US Navy's nuclear powered aircraft carrier, the USS Carl Winston. This is the hangar area where the aircraft are parked. 
the very fact that we have the court nations coming together demonstrating their shared trust a show of strength taking part in these malabar exercises is in itself a telling sign of the significance that the court partners attach to a free and open indo-pacific These multilateral exercises are quite significant. The quad regrouping of four powerful navies has riled China, which is flexing its military power globally and has built the world's largest navy. As India looks to counter growing Chinese influence, it must focus on its naval power. In June this year, Defense Minister Rajnath Singh took stock of Project Seabird, the largest naval infrastructure project for India. He also said India should aim to be among one of the top three naval powers in the world in the next 10 to 12 years' time. This is an ambitious target. The Indian Navy is strengthening its sea legs. It is expanding its maritime horizons. But it also needs to accelerate the introduction of disruptive indigenously designed technologies to become a force to reckon with.